Hey, what's up, everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Deuce tutorial. And today, what we're going to do, rather than going through some more plugin basics, what we're going to do is we're going to actually get started in building our own plugin, which is going to be a gain slider. So it's just going to be a basic gain slider that's going to control the volume of our uh, our input um, our our input sound. Okay. Um, now I'm going to break this down into two parts. First part is going to be really just taking a look at the way that the front end plugin um, editor interacts with the plugin processor. And then the second part, we're going to extend the functionality of our gain slider to make it a little bit more uh, like the way that a real slider works. Um, so in case you don't know, we hear uh, as humans, we hear logarithmically rather than linearly. Um, and we just need a slider that is able to reflect the way that we hear as humans. Okay, but I'll explain that more in the next tutorial. Uh, what we're going to focus on now is just getting the basic functionality of the front end plugin working with the back end DSP processing. Okay, so we're just going to start off with a new project as always. This is going to be an audio plugin. I'll just call this game tutorial one. Put this in the development folder. Okay. And just open this up in Xcode. So a lot of this stuff is going to be combining a lot of the things that we've done in the past tutorials and just taking those and combining them into making kind of a bigger structure. Um, so, uh, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time really explaining stuff that I've already gone through before. Um, just because if I did, it would take forever. Okay, uh, I'm going to assume, uh, as I've said in past tutorials, that you do have some DSP knowledge. So um, if you know, if I had to explain everything, it would it would take a long time. So I'm going to try not to make this too long of a video. So as I've said before, um, we have the plugin processor, and just to review, we have uh, this function here. Uh, process block, which is where we're going to be doing all of the guts, all of our mathematical functions um, that is going to affect our sound. So we're going to have sound incoming, we're going to do something to it, and then the sound is going to go back out. Okay, And in between that, we're going to have what some people call like a transfer function or a difference equation or just an algorithm. Um, and that's going to change the sound in some way. Might distort it, might move it up a pitch, might um, change the volume like what we're going to do today. Okay, And that all happens here in the process block. Then we have the plugin editor, and this is just really um, a rehash of what we've done with the GUI tutorials, creating di dials, creating sliders. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to take those things and we're going to combine them into one. So getting, um, getting a slider to just control the volume of our input. Okay. Uh, so first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to go up here to the top left. We're creating a AU component today. So AU component plugin. So I'm just switching that to AU. Now, first thing that we're going to do is we're actually just going to build this just to make sure that um, that everything is working properly. Now, what we should see is that the output volume and the input volume are uh, are the same. Okay, that the plugin isn't actually affecting the sound at this point. Okay. So this is going to take a minute to build. Uh, we're going to open it up in Ableton and um, it's going to take a, it's going to take a second between opening and closing Ableton. One thing that I should point out um, is that when you, when you're actually building one of these and you're testing it out, you actually have to close, close out your DAW and, um, and open and open it back up for, for your plugin to reflect changes. Okay, Juice actually have their own plugin host, and that's something that we'll go uh, we'll go through in our next audio plugin basics uh, tutorial. But I don't have that set up yet, so um, so I can't uh, so I can't do that yet. So we're just gonna have to work with Ableton today. Um, hope you can bear with me. So I'm just opening up Ableton now. We've built the plugin. The plugin succeeded, and um, we're just gonna test it out. Just make sure that we have 
the same thing going out that we do coming in. Okay, uh, just takes a second to open. Uh, by the way, uh, thanks to everybody that's been commenting on the um, on the videos. There have been some people that are um, more seasoned than myself, you know, more experienced that have been uh, giving useful feedback and um, pointing out some different things. So if you get a chance, uh, look through some of those past videos and um, and check out what some people have had to say. And um, it's quite useful. Cool. So I'm just going to create a audio track here in Ableton. Just throw a... Uh, a drum loop in there. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag our plug in here. In here. I find this quite exciting, you know, that we just have like <laughs> our own plug in that we're, we haven't done anything with it yet, but I just, I just think that's cool. Um, so at the moment it says, hello world. We haven't created a, a dial or a slider yet. Okay. And um, so, so these two volumes here should be the same, okay, just to show that it's unaffected. Okay, so we can see that the, those two volumes are the same. Nothing's actually happening to the sound just yet, but that the sound works fine. Okay, so I can just go ahead and close this out for now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started in thinking about... Uh, what we need to do to create this slider, okay? This might be a little bit rough because um, I've done a little bit of practice with this, but, you know, I just think that it's better if I go through this process with you guys. And, um, you know, so when we encounter problems, we can really, um, you know, see what we need to do to solve them, okay? So, um, so first thing that we need to do is we need to create a variable that's going to control our volume, okay? So when we're, when we're thinking about volume control, all we're doing is we're taking the incoming values. So you have these, uh, this incoming stream of values that are going between negative 1 and positive 1, floating point values. And we're just taking those and we're multiplying all of those values by a number, and that's going to change the volume, okay? So if I have, uh, if I have an input value coming in of 1, and I multiply that by uh, the volume that I want, which is 0 0.5, the outgoing value would be 0 0.5, half the volume. Okay, so I hope I hope you guys can understand that. Uh, and if if that's not clear to you, um, just drop me a comment or a message or something, and uh, maybe I'll do a separate tutorial on that. Okay, so I'm going to create a um, a global variable for now. I'm just going to call it. I'm going to make it type double. I'm going to call it raw volume. For now okay then I'm gonna go into the um, plugin processor okay so now we just have to adapt this this code a little bit they've been nice enough to give us an output an output stream right away with the default code but we just need to uh, we just need to adapt this a little bit okay uh, I'm just gonna instantiate this the value of raw volume just so I have a default value um, to start off with. Okay, good practice. I'm just going to make it 0 0.015 just so when we test this out, if we see a difference between um, the input volume and the output volume now that we know that this is working properly. Okay. Now they've given us our right pointer. Um, what we need to do is we need to we need to find the so so basically what we need to do is we need to go to a sample we need to find it and then we need to take that sample and we need to multiply it by um, by our volume to change it okay so that's what we're going to do here uh, we're going to do this using a for loop because we're going through every we need to do this to every sample okay um, so I'll just do int sample equals zero, sample is less than, than our buffer size, get num samps, get num samples, plus plus sample. Okay, so, um, so what we need to do is go through our, all of our data here. And we're just going to take all of that data and we're going to multiply it by our, our value for raw volume. Okay, so we've got channel data. OK, 
Okay. Um, and this we're going to go sample equals. Um, so this is going to be buffer dot get get sample. Um, so we're getting the sample. Okay, we're going to the channel, we're going to the sample, and then we're going to do something to it. Okay, so the channel that we're at, we're already iterating through the channel. We're going, we're going through channel one, uh, should I say channel zero, channel zero and channel one, which are our left speaker and our right speaker. Okay. And then we need to go through the samples. Okay. So we're going through the we're going to the channel, we're going to the sample. Now we're just going to multiply that by our raw volume. Okay? And that should work. Okay? So all we're doing is we're saying output speaker the out the output the value of the output is this sample times our value which is zero, which is 0 0.015. So if we go ahead and build this, let's build this, see if it su succeeds. Okay. And now if we open up Ableton, so this is going to take a second once again. Okay, it should open any second. Come on, Ableton. Always takes a second. Okay, it's opening. I promise. Okay. So if we go, let me just create a track. Uh, I'm just going to put the plugin on the track. And then grab a sample, make it a drum loop. Okay, turn the tempo down. Okay, if I hit play, I should see um, that the output is less than the input volume, okay? And you can see that there, okay? You can see that this volume is getting, so, so we have these samples that are coming in, they're getting multiplied by our value, which is 0 0.015 at the moment, and then the output volume is much lower, okay? Cool. So that's our raw volume. Okay. So now we need to go and take a look at the front end of our plugin. Okay. Where we're going to create the actual slider that's going to, uh, that's going to control what the volume is going to be. Okay. So we can just erase all of this hello world business. Okay. Um, set size, let's just set the size to 200, let's say 400. Okay, so now we just need to create a slider. I'll just call it gain, uh, gain slider. Sounds like a good name. Now we need to add it as a child of our component. Add and make visible. Uh, in slider. Okay. Um, so now we just need to set the slider styles and the values and all of that business. So we'll go gain slider. Um, set slider style. So we got slider, slider style. Uh, vertical, linear vertical. Okay. Uh, we need to set initial, um, we need to set a range for it. So gain slider, set range. So we're just going to set this to 0, 0.0 and 1.0. If I wanted to make it louder, I could multiply it by values bigger than one, but um, we're not going to do that. Okay, uh, we're going to set an initial value, okay, 
uh, set value. I'll just put it to 0 0.5 for now. Um, we need to think about the text box. Okay, gain slider, set text. Yeah, text box style. So we got slider. I'll put I'll put the text box below. Uh, we'll make it read only. Um, we'll make this 100 pixels by 25 pixels. Okay. Um, I think I have everything there. Okay, so so now we just actually have to draw the slider itself. So we could just say gain slider, set bounds. We'll just make this um, simple for today. So we'll just call this get local bounds. So set it to the size of our window. Okay. And I think that's everything. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to build this quick just to see if, um, just to see that the, the slider itself is actually um, drawn correctly, remotely correctly. So just opening Ableton again. So should be up in any second here. Okay, it's opening. Okay, so let's just add audio track loop. I don't know why we're doing this because all we want to see really is the GUI. Um, okay, so there we there we go. If we wanted to be picky, we could adapt this and make this, um, you know, attach a label to it, all that stuff, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. So, okay. So, uh, so we have our slider now and we're good to go. Now we just need to connect these two things to each other. Okay. Well, how do we do that? Okay. So as you recall in the past slider, um, slider tutorial, we can actually use the functionality of the slider listener class okay so if we look in the slider listener which I conveniently have right here so a class for receiving callbacks from a slider okay so when the slider changes value we need to change the value of our raw volume okay um, and as you may recall we have a virtual function that we need to define. Okay, so the whole reason that we're adding this, uh, that we're gonna be inheriting from the slider listener class is because we want something to happen when the slider changes value, okay? Which is we want the, we want the value that the, that the uh, input stream is getting multiplied by to change, okay? So in order to do that, we need, let me make sure I'm in the right place. Okay, so so we need to say public slider listener. Okay, add a comma here. Now one thing, uh, one thing I'm gonna caution you about that I encountered uh, just a couple minutes ago when I was doing this tutorial before and I had to stop because I messed up. So if I try to compile right now, um, like even if I put, okay, if I say void, so, so this is a, this is a, um, this is a virtual function. So I need to define, um, so I need to define this, this, um, function. So, uh, what's it called? Slider value changed. So slider value changed, right? Okay, and it's slider, so we're pointing to the slider that we want changed. We're gonna say override because we're overriding the function. Okay, if I try to compile this right now, 
It's gonna get an uh, you're gonna get an error, I think. Yeah. So, uh, and then if we look at the error, right? You get all this, all this craziness. Okay, and you're like, whoa, what's going on? Or at least that's what I thought is like, what the heck is going on? I've defined this. I've said I want to. What you have to do is you actually have to you actually have to put it. You have to you have to put the function itself. Okay, so if we put void. Okay, and then we just use this because this is where we're talking about. Um, slider value change. So you actually have to define it here. Okay, just in case you get that same error and you're like, what the heck is going on? So. So now if I compile it, should be should be cool, I think. Yeah, cool. So so we've succeeded now. Okay? So so we've got this function now, slider value changed, okay? And now we just need to define what we want to happen when I change the value on the slider. Now conveniently, uh Jews have actually added an object of uh, gain tutorial one audio processor, which is the back end of our plugin. So if we have values that we need to push into our um, that that we need to be changed by our GUI, uh, this is this is the way that we do it. Okay, so is using this object processor. Okay, so if you're wondering how those two things connect, this is exactly how it connects using this using this object. Okay. So just just to kind of be a little bit more clear about that, just in case I'm not. So we have so we have this variable raw volume, uh, which I need to actually make public. Okay, it's private. So let's make that public. Okay, so so I have this so I have the raw volume that's getting multiplied to the values uh, that are coming from our audio stream. Okay, so now I need to control those with the slider. The way to do that is by using this object here, the processor object that they that Juice have created for us. Okay, so. So in our slider value changed, we just need to define what what's actually happening when we change the value of the slider. Okay, so if slider equals, and then we reference our gain slider. Okay, something happens here, um, which is raw volume. Oh, needs to be processed. So we need to go processor dot raw volume equals. Then we just need to get the slider value. Gain slider get value. Okay. So that should that should be fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and build that. See if see if that works. Okay, cool. That succeeded. And just waiting for Ableton to open for us. Just takes a second. Can't wait to get this. Hopefully, the juice host will uh, will be quicker for us when we uh, get that up and running. Okay, cool. So, so now we have. Let me just get a loop up again. Yeah, drum and bass. I love it. Boom. Um, sorry, just gotta fix that. Okay, so let's load the plugin itself. 
I think I have to close this out and open it, reopen it every time. Um, okay, cool. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it's reading our initial value. Okay, our value is not changing. Our value is not changing. Okay, what's what's going on? What's going on? Okay, so let's close this out for a second. What have we missed? We've missed something. Okay. Slider listener, slider value changed. Ah, okay. So we need to make, we need to have our component listening, listening for the changes. Okay. Um, so, um, gain slider, add listener. this I think that's right okay anything else that could be wrong um, I'm just gonna go over here and I'm going to comment this raw volume out just so it's not so this is going through so this is looping through that could be potentially tripping us up as well okay um, Cool. Let's gain. Let, let's let's build this again. See if we've got our functionality. Okay. Let's open in Ableton. Hopefully one more time. Emptying my trash. I do that as a habit. Okay, Ableton's opening. Okay, and let's add an audio track. Oop. Okay, and then let's add our plugin. So Okay, so now I'm ah, there we go. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna stop it right there. So, uh, as you can see, that that works fine. Um, you can see that the changes that the changes in the volume are linear. Okay, so what that means is that as we get louder. As the volume gets louder, we're hearing we aren't registering any sort of change in the volume. Okay, so so it's like we're getting, we're seeing, we're 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 actually perceiving big changes in volume here for like the probably the first half or first sixty percent of the of the slider itself. But as we get louder, our our, perce our, our perceived change to volume gets less and less. Okay, let me see if I can demonstrate this for you. So so as you can hear, the when I was moving when I was moving that the gain slider over the last 25% of the slider, you aren't really hearing that much of a perceived change in volume. You're probably hearing a little bit, but there's not that much of a perception. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to make the, um, uh, make, uh, create a function which allows us to make the slider uh, behavior more like the way that we as humans hear uh, volume, which is logarithmically. Okay, and that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, sorry about the waiting times between opening, and closing Ableton, and build build times, so on and so forth. Um, but I hope you learned a lot. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, just um, drop me a comment or a message, and I will see you for the next one.